Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Adobe Photoshop design series. In today's video we are going to be continuing on with blending options and blending styles and we are going to be showing you how you can create a basic bevel and emboss effect. So having said that we're going to be going over all of the settings to do with the bevel and the emboss effects and we're going to be going over how you can create these different styles. So for example if you take a quick look at my scene here inside of Photoshop you can see I've got this bevel uh, bevel leveled out effect, I've got like a flat chiseled effect, and I've also got an inner bezel effect. We're going to be going over all of that stuff in today's video. So to get things started, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to get a basic little document here with a basic background and I'm going to put some text on it. If you want to create some text, it's as simple as just simply pressing the little T tool on the left hand side and then just write something and it's just going to be test text for now. Now keep in mind when it comes to bevel and emboss effects it doesn't just have to be to text you can do it to anything you like. So let's say you've got to pick another picture or another layer you want to do it to you can do it to anything but for now I'm just going to be doing it to text and the process is exactly the same as well. So if you do want to do it just go ahead and right click on your layer and then from there go up to blending options. Once that loaded, we've got our layer style panel. Now, just as we did before for the drop shadow and that stuff in the last video, we're going to be accessing that from here. And that's going to be from the bevel and emboss section here. And then we've also got a contouring section, which we'll be going over as well. Um, but for now, let's just go ahead and select bevel and emboss. And you can see as soon as I have selected that, you can see it automatically applies a basic bevel and emboss effect. So you can see here, it's actually given itself a little bit of depth and it's actually started to come out from the scene. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly fit this on the screen so you can see it a little bit easier here. And you can see here it's now affected by light and it's got that extra depth. So what we're going to be doing over this video is just going over some of the settings that we have available to, to us to play around with some of the effects that you can do. So first things first, you've got two things, you've got the most important thing, your style. Your style is so you can go from an outer bevel, inner bevel, emboss it, or don't worry about the rest, but you can do those as well. Um, but for now, you've got outer bevel, which is beveling it on the outside of your layer, inner bevel, which is beveling it on the inside, so that's contained within the layer, and then lastly, you've also got your emboss as well, um, which is something slightly different, um, but we'll be going over that later on. And then for technique, underneath that, so I'm going to keep inner bevel selected for now. And then technique, we've got a couple of other options. We've got smooth, so it's quite soft like it is here. And then we've also got chisel hard, which makes it quite rough, quite hard, and it keeps all of the edges quite flat, as you see here, going across the text. And then we've got chisel soft, which is just a little bit of a softer version of the hard versions you saw there. It just basically adds a, that extra little tone of light at the top there. It just makes things a little bit better. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go ahead and work with the smooth one. Moving on from there, we have got the depth. The depth is pretty much how tall you are going to have your effects. So do you want how much you want it to pop out from the scene, basically? So if you have quite a low depth, it's going to be hard to see and it's just not going to have that much light hitting it. Whereas if I turn the depth all the way up, you can see there is definitely a bit of depth and it's accepting a lot of light on there as well. And then you've also, underneath that, you've got your direction up and down, which pretty much allows you to control which way this is all cut. So do you want it to be cut upwards or downwards? It's entirely up to you. For now, I'm just going to leave it at up. From here, moving on, we've now got the size thing, and this is where it does start to get a little bit more confusing, as we've got the depth, which is essentially similar to size in the sense that you can try to control the size of the depth. Um, size does something slightly else, however. Size is pretty much how big you want your... Uh, how big you want your bevel to be in terms of space inside of your layer. So for example, depth pretty much controls the the thickness and then the size controls how much space it can actually take up. Now if you increase this way too much here, you can see things do get a little bit distorted and it just doesn't look right. So maybe just limit yourself in terms of size 
Um, for me, I'm going to go for something like this, which is quite nice. And then from there, you've also got your soften just beneath that. And that is pretty much just going to fade this all a little bit for you and make it really, really nice on the eye. So what you've got to do here with all of this is you've just got to play around with all the different settings and get the right balance between all of these to get the look and the style that you are after. So one other thing that I'm going to quickly do, just so you can see this bevel stuff a little bit easier, is I'm actually going to go up to blending options and I'm going to turn down my fill opacity so you can't see the black anymore and literally the only thing you can see is the light and the shadows from your bevel and emboss effect. And if I do go and zoom out, you can see this actually looks quite nice. So I'm going to go back into there and now I'm going to start working on some of the light settings, the angles and that good stuff. So once again, going into blending options, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here again. And then from here, first things first, we have got the angle. That works in exactly the same way as it did in the last video. That pretty much just controls the angle of the light, so where it's going to be coming from. So let's say I want it to come from the top right. I can do so using the little angle tool. Um, and then from there, it's pretty much the light's going to be heading this way. So it's going to be heading towards the top right. So you can see the shadow, not the shadow, but the light on the top right. And then after that, you've got the shadow on the up, on the other side. You'll get it. Just play around with it. It's just a direction for the light. Now, beneath that, we've also got the altitude. The altitude is pretty much the... Uh, the height of the light. So is it going to be all the way up in the sky? Is it going to be quite low? And you can control that using the little number down here. So you can see I can actually move it not just around the edge of the circle, but I can also move it within the circle as well like this. So taking a look at that once again, if you have it down quite low, you're not really going to get any light. If you have it quite high up, you are going to get some. Um, so it's just a matter of playing around with these settings and getting the look and the style that you're after. Going down, moving on to some of the last settings, you've also got your highlight mode as well. Your highlight mode is just a blending mode. We will be going over those later on in the tutorial series. But the most important bit that you've got here is your light color. So your highlight is basically your color. So you can see we've got this white edge going all around our text here. That's pretty much exactly what that is. So if I was to give it a green highlight, you can see I can do that and it gives it this slight green tint where the light is. Now, if you're going for something natural, I wouldn't use something so bright in terms of color. I would maybe put it more towards the whites to make it more natural. So let's say you've got a nice blue sky and you're working with something that's been outside. Uh, you would add a little bit of blue to it because you have that sky coming through and onto your object. I wouldn't use white, pure white all of the time, maybe add a little bit of color to it, add a little tint, you can do lots of things with it. But once again, just play around with that. So I'm gonna leave this with this blue color for now. And then we can also control the opacity of that light. So basically how intense that light is gonna be for using the little scalar here. So if I set this all the way down to zero, there's gonna be no highlight from the light at all. And then if I send it all the way up, it makes it really, really bright. So for now, I'm just going to leave this at 50 exactly where it was before, is that's quite a nice little number and it just works well on our text here, which is quite nice. Then you've also got your shadow, uh, shadow mode. This is the same as the highlight basically, but it's going to be doing the other side of your text. It's going to be doing the darker side of things. Everyone knows what a shadow is. You can control the site, the, ch the color for it if you want to. Um, there's not really too many instances where you would. You might want to add a slight red tinge to it or something like that. So let's add a little bit of red to it there. And then press OK. You can do that. And then you can just change the opacity of the shadow as well once again. You can change the opacity up, down. It's entirely up to you. Play around with it. But for me, I'm going to leave this at about 75 as I like a quite strong shadow. If I press OK, you can see our text and our bevel effect is really coming to life here. It looks really solid and it looks like it's actually carved out of the wood, which is great. If I go up to blending options, there is one more thing that I wanted to show you. So if I go ahead and select contour, this is going to allow us to contour it. So what that is doing is pretty much controlling the the way that it's all chiseled in. So let me show you a couple of a couple of different ways. So if you select this one here, for example, on the little drop down for contours, you can see it adds a little bit of a ridge. So this is pretty much controlling the way the wood goes. Does it just go straight up 
or is it going to go up and then down again to create a contour effect? It's entirely up to you. Um, so let's just go ahead and create a basic one of ourselves. So I'm going to click on the little image here ourselves. And then from here, if you just click, you can create these additional points here. And then if you wanted to, you can drag it up, you can drag it down. And you can see we start to get those little ridges on there. Um, it's entirely up to you once again. It's just a matter of trying to get the look and the style that you're after. For me, I'm simply going to leave this on linear. If you wanted to, you can change the range. Um, it doesn't really do too much. Um, it just allows you to position uh, where those little red ridges are going to be if you're having, you know, additional ridges. So I'm just going to press OK. Now that's pretty much everything when it comes to bevel and emboss. We've got loads of effects here, loads of different settings that we've got available inside of this. It's just going to be a matter of playing around with all of the settings and then trying to get the look and the style that you're after. One other thing that I that you might want to do is maybe take a look at adding a glow to your bevel and emboss effect. The reason why is because it makes it stand out just a little bit more. Now, you're not necessarily going to use a big bright blue like I am, but you might want to just darken the edges a little bit using that glow. So if I go ahead and select outer glow as I have done here, from here we can then go ahead and change a few things. We can make this, let's just try and make it darker around the edges. Now the reason why we're using outer glow as opposed to drop shadow is because drop shadow is only going to be in one direction. It's going to be sort of opposite from where the light is, whereas outer glow is going to go around all of the edges here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly change this outer glow and I'm going to give it a slight red, slight orangey brown tinge to it. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to change the size down just like this. And because I don't want it to spread too much because then it doesn't look realistic. You wouldn't really have too much of a glow there. What I'm going to do is just get it around the edges here to make it look with a bit of dirt around it. And you can see that looks quite nice there. You can change the opacity to make it stronger, make it more transparent. It's entirely up to you. But I do like quite a strong little glow here to make this wood effect look really, really cool. In addition to that, you've also got your spread, which pretty much spreads out the glow within your sort of size area. It's hard to explain, but once again, it's just a matter of playing around with the different sizes, different effects, and all of that good stuff. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end off the video here. We have got a really cool looking effect here. We've got our text popping out of the wood. Once again, if you want to download this little project sample that I've just created here, you can download that in the download link below. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you stay awesome. Keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out.